baggage you just get on board All you need is faith to hear the diesel song and Don't need no ticket, you just thank the Lord People get ready Thanksgiving, whether the celebrations we had or the celebrations we didn't have, we Christians begin something different this weekend. This is now the beginning of the liturgical year. This is the beginning of preparation as we consider not just the Christ who came in history when we celebrate at Christmas, but the Christ who comes in our day in word and sacrament, and the Christ who will once again come in glory to judge the living and the dead as we pray in the Creed. So welcome to the liturgical celebration of Advent. And let this be a joyful and joy-filled number of weeks as we celebrate in preparation for what truly matters. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Would you please join me in praying our hymn of praise, which throughout this season of Advent is going to be Mary's song, the Magnificat. Let us pray. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. His mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown the strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat. He hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Grant us, Lord, the lamp of charity that never fails, that it may burn in us and shed its light on those around us, and that by its brightness we may have a vision of the holy city where dwells the true and never failing light. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which our Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may raise to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we now listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our unrighteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading is taken from the beginning of, first, of St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the final reading is taken from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, 
The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the heavens, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. From the fig tree learn the lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know the summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, they will not pass away. But about the day or the hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A new liturgical cycle, a new series of readings, a different gospel now, the Gospel of Mark throughout the next liturgical year until next December. The season of Advent, something new and different. There's a hymn that I happen to like during this particular season, and most people not everyone is crazy about it. Everyone loves O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, or Will He Comes, and all some of this, the, the oldies but goodies. But there is a song that I have always loved that starts off with the words, My Lord, what a morning. And it sings, it's got this lovely tinkle, tinkle type of melody. My Lord, what a morning, my Lord, what a morning, my Lord, what a morning. When the stars begin to fall. What a disconnect. A lovely melody. And the stars falling, crashing, the imagery that's supposed to give us. Words that a hymn only makes sense when you think about this coming out of the context of slavery, okay? From the slaves' quarters where life was without any kind of hope, any kind of opportunity for love, where escape to the north was so risky and often so deadly, when lives were spent marked by backbreaking labor and abuse and family breakups and oppression and evil beyond which we in the 21st century are only now starting to understand the impact over the course of days and months and weeks and years and decades and centuries whose impression still is felt. A song of truth and faith. My Lord, one a morning. Make the stars fall, bring them down crashing upon this evil, unhuman, inhumane system. From those who would experience freedom only through death, waiting for God to make things right, that song, our Advent song, is a song that speaks of hope and speaks of victory. Now let me explain a little bit. Oppression, freedom, and God's time a part of that song. And whether the scripture writer is Isaiah of the exile, who first reading we heard, or St. Paul talking to the Christians of Corinth, or Jesus himself, there is a theme that is intended to be understood by the, the hearers of this word, whether it was the written scroll of Isaiah or the people that Paul wrote to in Corinth, or the people Jesus was speaking to directly that afternoon. The world of faith filled with books Jewish faith filled with holy writings that spoke of two very basic things. Number one, there is bad stuff in this world. There has always been and sadly there always will be as long as there are human beings who are filled with sin and malice and evil. But you know what? The bad stuff doesn't win because God in God's time is going to make things right for those who believe and those who live their faith and their lives are filled with that faith and love. And when at least a thousand years ago, when I went in seminary, and you start studying all of those New Testament courses, 
you start reading many of the ancient texts that Jesus would have known as a rabbi and teacher. Every Jewish male would have studied preparing for the equivalent of bar mitzvah if, if such existed at, 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 as a formal ceremony in the first century. Paul would have known, people would have all known. Images of quaking places and scheming nations, kings who capture kings, of sword and earthquake and famine and disease and pestilence and hatred, kind of a description of the world outside our, our doors right now, isn't it? Signs that, believe it or not, for the writers of the text, meant God was watching and God was waiting and God was going to act. Jesus tapped into those images that people knew. And he said, you know, there's one message through it all, and it is the message of hope. Don't focus on the cosmic signs. Don't focus on the scary images. He preaches to his disciples, be aware, stay awake. Your God is with you. Your God is not only coming in the future. Your God accompanies you and walks with you now. And ours is a faith and a trust for the darkest hours of life. Whether you are living in fear because of this virus or fear because of the inability of our nation to deal with it, or you are filled with worry so deep that you can't sleep because someone you love hasn't come home yet, or maybe dying and feeling abandoned. When your fears are so large they could fill a room if they were something substantial and physical, at those very moments, we are told, do not lose hope. Keep faith. Be prepared. Be prayer-filled or prayerful. Keep vigil with your life. The sound of the master coming home is sure. It will happen. It's not scary. It is the sound of victory. So unlike so many of my brother and sister ministers of churches that want to tell us exactly when Christ is going to return, I'm going to respectfully disagree with them and say, certainly I don't know. You don't know. They don't know. Jesus himself said he didn't know. It's a question that's kind of above all our peer grades, pay grades. But here's the thing you should know. Know how to live your lives now like you really believe the Lord is coming home for you to take you home to himself. Christ will return. Live each day in the shadow of eternity. Don't be immersed in the stuff of now and the complaints of now and the things that tie you down now and the things that sap the strength from you now. Don't be immersed in the things of time. and Forget about the fact that we have someone who loves us, who created us, and who is going to call us home to eternity if we remain awake and alert and vigil. So as I often do, I steal a prayer. Not my own work, but the words meant something to me, so I end the sermon with this reflection. We pray, Lord of all ages, as season succeeds season and year supplants year, we come to you trusting that your call to wait and to watch and to trust still has the same urgency that those who heard those words so many years, decades, centuries, or millennia ago they heard them as well, and they believed. Give us faith. Give us hope. Give us commitment. Give us determination. Give us courage to do what they did, to stake our lives on your promises in your time. Amen. Together now, let us profess our own faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Creator of the stars of night, stars in the sky, the sun, the moon, you are the light by which we wake and we work. Surround your church, its leaders and its people with your armor of light. We pray for our Mike, Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andrew, our bishop, and for bishops everywhere. Strengthen them as they reach out to you in prayer and hope. Open their hearts to your will. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our leaders, those in civil and political authority, our president, our president-elect, our governor, Congress, the courts of the land. Savior of the nations, guide those who govern and awaken those who lead, that we may all live in the spirit of cooperation and share so that we all have enough of food, of care, of comfort. Lord, hear our prayer. For people across the world whose spirits bend under the yoke of oppression, give the people of this community a sense of togetherness and support. Open our eyes to those who live by the wayside, whose faces and needs remain invisible. Lord, hear our prayer. Lover of souls, you continue to mold us in your image. Hold us in your hand. We ask your blessings on those who struggle with illness, anxiety, grief, or isolation. Today, we continue to pray for those whose lives put them in danger from this virus on a regular basis. Daniel Reardon, Elise Atkin Brandt, Kelly Ross, Marjorie Jean Michelle, Marissa Joyner, Christopher Skahan, Elena Ariste, Ellie and Aaron Levitt, John Lafata, Robert Thompson, Kristen Smith, Kimberly Bruin, Caitlin Bruin, Kyle Tompkins, Jackson Shabbats, Paul DeMore, Christopher Beckett, Maya Bissonette, Brittany Jordan. We ask you to please hold in prayer Charles, Charles Silvestri, Sharon Scanlon, Leah Dakins, Jack Porteus, Marissa Cardinal, April Fallow, Julie Mostagin, Mike Lafata, Kit Donahue, Michael Harris, Michael and Mary Ann Albanese, Ricky Lucio. And we pray for the repose of the soul of John Austin Touch. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you and forgive you of all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the Lord's peace be with each one of you.
We'll continue with the Liturgy of the Table, and during the seasons of Advent and Christmas, we're going to be praying Eucharistic Prayer B, which you can follow in the insert that was emailed. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, because you have sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearance. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love that you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious Father, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where blessed John, Paul, and all your saints, we may enter the inher everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Together, let us pray as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. For our final prayer, let us pray, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as now we begin this season of preparation, as we to celebrate the incarnation, look for certain uh, extra little things. I'm going to be sending you out opportunities for prayer, reflection, maybe activities to try to make Advent more personal and more of a personal preparation for the coming of the Lord in your life. Not just for the festivities of Christmas and trying to capture something which we may not be able to capture this year, but something that brings you personal reflection and personal peace. And, and, and a time to kind of renew your relationship with the Lord during this very special liturgical season. I thank you for participating. I thank you for being part of our prayer. I don't know who you are. There's no way of knowing who's watching this. But I thank you for being a part of our community. And if there's anything I can do to assist you in your own spiritual journey, I hope you'll reach out and let me know. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and we pray for God's blessing. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.